Hi everybody, my name's Doug Wilson, and this is Yellowhawk Customs Outdoors. I got a special guest today on the channel. You've seen him before. He's a wild and crazy guy, right? So he knows quite a bit about a lot of things, right? Um, and I myself have learned a lot about knives, backpacking, the military, everything, right, from this guy. Okay, so him and I have been perusing the internet looking for some award-winning anoraks, right? Really well-built uh, pieces of gear for the bush, you know, for guys that love to get out into the, into the woods um, that are not going to break the bank right but still bomb proof quality gear and I think we found a few okay so if you stay tuned we're gonna talk about anoraks during this video we'll be right back okay guys so we're gonna get right into anoraks award-winning anoraks at least in my opinion and bob's opinion oh man i let the cat out of the bag bob come on over here <laughs> let me hobble i'm just over. gonna turn it over to bob and he can enthrall you <laughs> howdy do what you need to do brother you always know that when he comes on with this uh free uh, announcement that uh you know, it's usually me. I feel like a movie star sometimes, and I'm really not. I'm just an old guy that's been around for a long time. Anyway, we're going to talk about anor wow. we want to talk about anoraks today. This is an old piece of gear that went back to the days of the Inuit, or what we, who we call the Eskimo. They don't like to be called that, but anyway, uh, it's usually a one-piece garment. Uh, goes down uh, the long hunters and the uh, from the 18th century uh, to the 17th, 16th. They used to wear a very long type of. Um, uh, coat or jacket that either wrapped around and they used a sash or they threw over their head but it kept the legs warm and you could sleep in it and so forth um, we want it, it, it's a good it's a good piece of gear especially if you need it for uh, to stand alone as a shelter with a shell over top of it and uh, made of wool or, or polyester or fleece or whatever and um, it tends to keep one very warm I like sleeping in mine because you know when you're in your sleeping bag you're tossing and turning and everything rolls up or off your butt and in your back well this stays down okay so uh, without further ado um, why one piece of, of cloth well if you look at heat signatures in, in a lot of clothing uh, organizations they check out heat see where does heat escape from a garment okay well most of the time it escapes from the neck okay the, the wrist or at the bottom or along a zipper line I rarely wear anything with zippers I have hardly any zipper up jackets because your heat escapes through that area, okay? Zippers, all right? They're not bad. The other thing is they, they might rip out too. That's another good reason for wearing one piece of, uh, of uh, clothing or garment, okay? So <clears throat> I had this, uh, this that I'm wearing right here. It's made out of 16 ounce blanket, uh, made by uh, Fred Asbell, okay? He's an archery company, whatever. Look him up. Uh, way before uh, our good friend Toby Holland started doing wool uh, Anorax himself. Bob, okay. How do you spell that? Asbel. A I think it's A S L B E L L. A S L. -S -S no, I'm sorry. A S B E L L. Okay. Asbel. As uh, Fred Asbel. Fred Asbel. Okay. Anyway, they'll work with you. I, I called and talked to his wife, so forth, and basically she made this for me from an, an, a line that they have. What I did was I made it four inches longer because I wanted to cover my legs. And if you've seen me in backpacking videos, I wear shorts all the time. Okay. Or I wear tights, and my, my wife sends it to me, it looks like pantyhose, but I don't care, they're tights, okay? And I, I like my legs covered up. Um, the other thing is you'll notice that the sleeves are longer. I make them longer. Why? So I can do this. If I don't have gloves, I can at least retract my hands into my sleeves. If they get in my way, I can pull them up or I can fold them over. The other thing I did with this is, is I have a high pocket so that I don't have to be scrambling down here because I have a shell that was made by Toby Holland that has the lower, lower pocket. I can keep things up in this area here and if you can see i have some wool they put some wool shearling uh inside to keep your hands warm it's good hand warmer okay 
The other thing about this is I don't like the ties on these uh, neck pieces. I have a zipper, so I had a zipper put in here, okay? I usually wear a shema or a broad scarf, and I wear a knit hat in the cold. I don't like hoods. Uh, you can't hear, and it knocks down your periphery. But what I did was this, for it was an idea that I got from colonial soldiers would have a, um, a cape over top of their shoulders that was more waterproof than the rest of the coat, and it would allow water to be to, to drip off or whatever onto the ground, okay? So anyway, uh, I had the same thing done to this. So I took a hood. As you can see, I can sleep in the hood. It just sits, whatever, beautiful, right? Nice hood, look like Robin the Hooded Man, okay? Anyway, <laughs> you can unzip this hood like so and throw it down on the shoulder like so. So if it rains or snows, my shoulders have a double layer of wool on top <laughs> and it's not gonna soak through, okay? Just the thing that I saw when I was like in the sixth grade, we used, they used to make uh, little uh, snow bunny coats like that for little kids. So I decided to incorporate it. Um, check them out, Fred Asbell, they'll work with you. Uh, a couple people have them. Chris Pagan uh, got some one from them. Uh, Travis Sizemore did and everything. Now, that being said, they're, they're, they're nicely priced. If Toby Holland had been making these before I got this, I would have bought one of his, <laughs> but he wasn't, okay? So we had to be coerced to make some things. I, guess. I bought one. Okay, <laughs> so we're gonna show you some more award-winning anoraks, okay? Now this is like a dress, you gotta pull it up over your butt to sit down, all right? Which I don't mind, because I used to wear a kilt in the bagpipe band, all right? So, one of the uh, first garments that Toby put out, let me tell you, this guy's a really good guy. He lives in uh, Jonestown, Pennsylvania. Good fella, uh, used good materials, stitching, everything. Was he made this fleece um, pullover, okay? Like so. See? Now, hood, hood fits over the head real nicely. There's no drawstring. Now, if you look on his site, newer ones do have a drawstring for the hood. He's incorporated them there, okay? Right, he's got newer hoods on these fleece. Right, on the anoraks. fleece. These are, these are very warm. Uh, they're, they're reasonably priced. It's a good undergarment. You can wear them under a shell, okay? He's got a good cargo pocket right here. See, good big cargo pocket here. And Toby he, Holland? Toby Holland, as in the country, Holland. Okay. Good bottom drawstring, so forth, okay? Very nice, uh, very nice piece of kit. It's called the Wandering Parson. Wandering Parson, okay? That's that. Okay. Okay. Next. Next. A little heavier and in the ah. wool. Now, this is, this is, we, we made some statements to Toby. Hey, man, why don't you start doing this? Why don't you start doing that? Well, you know, this is really price friendly, okay? And well made. And we like to support guys who are on our channel, all right? Because everybody else is getting ripped off as far as I'm concerned. Now here is his wool, the wool one that Doug, that Doug purchased, okay? Nice, nice looking piece of gear. I mean, well made, uh, reinforcing uh, stitching, bar tacking, uh, you know, inversion of the, uh, the seams so that, you know, water uh, peels off or drips off and doesn't go inside through the seams. His, this one has a neck draw, okay, uh, laced up neck draw and a hood with toggles yeah, that's pretty here. Damn comfortable. And, and a gusset right here like a wind gusset so your neck's not open when you when you draw this close okay uh very nice very nice weight this is about you know i guess uh 14 ounces or so or 16 ounces of wool also and he also has the bottom drawstring very nice very nice piece of kit yeah this one uh it's not too heavy you understand uh some of these <coughs> anoraks on the market are really heavy wool um, and these are not really heavy, but they're still kind of heavy. You get what I'm saying? So. <laughs> <laughs> they're not really heavy, but they're kind of heavy. Right. Okay. Now, what I want to show you is what I just purchased um, from Toby is one of his shells. And I had some modifications done with this shell. And um, I will put it on and show you what I did for it. Okay. Now, the whole thing about a shell is to cut down on wind and water. Okay. And... Uh, those are two of the things that take away your warmth from the from the your your body is wind and water wet and wind okay so what this does i made it longer also put it long and there's a reason for this i'll tell you about it in a minute when i take it off again if i can get it off all right i made it as long as my as my under undergarment sleeves again are long again see so i can draw them up and, and use them one thing that the uh, Europeans do, they put their thumb hole in here. That would be a nice thing to add to yeah. these, is to have that thumb hole yeah, come through. Yeah, a lot through. of the European shirts, so, uh, outdoor shirts, have a thumb hole. Right. 
The other thing uh, with this is that um, when he makes this shell, he kind of makes it the same way he makes the uh, um, his uh, his wool uh, anorak. Anyway, what I had him do was I don't like the lace ups. I like a zipper. So here it's zippered up. Okay. So you see, you use zipper. All right. <clears throat> I also asked him to put an external pocket out here, so I don't have to fiddle around with things when I want it. See, it zips. It's secure. Okay. Wallet, keys, whatever the case. Okay. And I have a real deep, deep kangaroo pocket. And on the inside, he put a hanger here. I can clip my knife to this. I clip my keys to this because I don't like wearing my knife on my belt. I wear my knife either around my neck, inside, or I wear it in my in the pouch. That's just what I do. Okay. I'm gonna give him a good yeah, look get at a good this look. thing. I've got um, I have a drawstring here. Let me show you. I have a drawstring on at the waist here, so I can cinch it up at the waist on the inside. Okay. And I have a drawstring on the bottom, so I can encapsulate myself right. as one full unit okay there's no there's no there's no way air or water can get in now cotton and, and uh, canvas they will only take water up to a certain point the threads will swell and then after that the water will start to weep out of the material okay and then essentially it'll start to weep through you or start to get to you okay that's why you want to have fleece or wool underneath of a cotton or canvas shell Nylon, you're, you're pretty reassured that the water won't get through because it doesn't do that. But cotton, uh, it by its very nature, will swell when it gets, starts to get wet. That keeps your water resistant for a while, but not proof. And then after a while, it gets so soaked that it starts to go through, okay? So that's also from Toby, reasonably priced. Um, he did it for me extra as a, uh, a custom. Let me get this guy off here. Help! <laughs> I've been swallowed by an anorak. <laughs> Are you sure? I think so. <laughs> right. Oh, thank God I'm back. All right, I feel like a baby or something coming out of the womb. Anyway, <laughs> one of the thing, reasons, I got this as a 3X, okay? Double X would have been fine. One of the reasons why I got this as a 3X is that in a survival situation, if I want to, I can take, oh, your cigars right there. I can take yeah. this, put it down this way, and shove my sleeping bag down inside this, the feet down into the, the hood. I can chinch everything up and I can put this up around part, three quarters of the way around me and I'll have a good barrier or I'll have a good uh, bivy sack, okay? So what you can do is you can use this whole sack as, as a bivy sack. Now what I, I why I asked uh, Toby to make this bigger was that uh, if you, the Eskimo or the Inuit, okay, they will get inside their anorak and they'll bring the hood up Right. And they'll hunker down, put the their snow. backs to they'll put their backs to a snowstorm. If they have kids or dogs, they'll put them, they'll lay them around their legs, and they'll wait it out with the snow beating the get up against them right. and piling up on the back of them. All right, so that's that's it's a survivability sort of thing. It's 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 the utilization of your equipment to have more than one aspect. Okay, because you can you use it for two or three or four different um, reasons, different areas, so forth. Okay. Uh, it just makes sense to have something so you, you don't have to carry all this stuff on you and if weight is a concern and especially in backpacking it would be a weight now this is pretty hefty okay this is pretty hefty canvas uh, cotton canvas but I, I want it that way okay and I should be able to sleep out in the snow or a light light drizzle or mist with this on and with the wool underneath and maybe a, uh, a polyester type you know polypro type shirt underneath of it okay so uh, Taking a hint from our ancestors, I, uh, that's, that's how I do business. Uh, you know, what's old isn't always bad. And um, with the uh, onset of new materials, okay, they can make the old things better. They can last longer, they can be warmer, they can be cooler. And um, it's, just, it's, just, it's just one way to use modern technology on some uh, old basic um, crafts and skills. Uh, one thing that uh, as I've said before, I really, really am enamored with. Okay, um, I just wanted to show this one, the wool one. He showed the uh, the canvas uh, anorak from Toby Holland, and I want to show this wool one real quick. Um, so basically, if you watch the channel on a regular basis or or not. 
a lot of guys know that I'm not a huge wool fan. One reason and one reason only. It's a great outdoor material, but it tends to be heavy, especially when it gets wet, okay? So I tend more toward fleece garments if I'm backpacking, if I'm walking distances, two miles, three miles, 10 miles, whatever, okay? I like wool and I ordered this for a base camp situation or a short backpacking trip or something like that, right? Um, because I tell you, if you're a backpacker, you know well that you don't want to carry any more than you have to, you know, weight-wise, all right? So, you know, when I did that through hike of the Appalachian Trail, within two weeks, my base weight was down to like 18 pounds, right? I got, I got rid of a lot of stuff, creature comforts, that I just knew I wasn't going to need, get it? Um, but, you know, a lot of this gear just enhances your time in the outdoors. It doesn't really help you survive or anything like that, right? So... I bought this uh, wool anorak from Toby Holland at Wandering Parson, and I, I tell you, the one thing I really like about it is it's not heavy, right? It, it's wool, okay, and it's probably twice as heavy as this fleece one, right? But still not as heavy as some on the market, okay? Um, uh, you know, the uh, the Boreal Anorak, that is a badass piece of gear. It's just, in my opinion, it's just too expensive, the other one, right? Lester River. Is Lester, River Lester River Bushcraft. Uh, it's just too expensive for me. Now, if you got, you know, expendable income and you want to go for something like that, great. You know what? Um, you know, have at it. Well, this you know is one I mean? of the reasons why we give you, we talk to you about this stuff is that this for the common middle class dudes got three right. kids and whatever and wants to get in on this and, and, and be and have affordable gear that still is just as good and works right. just as well. That's why we do this. And you can't go wrong with Toby. He's a good guy. He'll work with you. Everybody we, we, we work with, you know, evening there. Evening uh, there. Every, every, <laughs> everybody we work with, we try to get guys. Oh, there. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. <laughs> and so um, anyway, uh, <laughs> oh, I, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, but we give you this because there are alternatives there are right. options okay budget friendly absolutely you know. you know somebody puts a name out there oh booby bushcrafter i gotta get twenty five thousand of them <laughs> or i'm not i'm not considered a bushcrafter no that's not true okay yeah, it doesn't work that way guys you know <laughs> just because it's popular doesn't mean it's the only piece of gear for you you know what i mean options so this channel is all about giving you options right the bigger channels, they can they can uh, review all that expensive gear. That's great. You know what I mean? That's great. I I prefer now. I tell you, some of the knives I I show are extremely expensive. Custom knives. That's me. I like custom knives, right? But when it comes to gear, that's why I do that part of the channel as well. More budget friendly. Now you may you may see pieces of gear on this channel that are fairly expensive but that's because i don't know of any alternative that's just as good right so you got toby holland at the wandering parson great gear just he, great gear he sells on etsy.com etsy etsy.com etsy right. the wandering parson okay so. great guy got, got this he, he, Within a week or so, you know, right. the stuff comes, you know. And I'll throw prices out there for this kind of stuff. 150 bucks, 150 dollars for this versus uh, 300 and some odd for these other ones. Right, versus 300 bucks for a, a, you know something that's more expensive. Right. This was what I have here. What I had to have special made was 125. Right. Okay. So. I mean, you know, we want to we want to take care of our people on our channel. That's what it's all about. Okay. So. Um, with that being said, Kumbaya, my lord, Kumbaya. <laughs> I think we're done. Yeah? I think so. Are you sure? Maybe. All right. All right. <laughs> okay, so Jeff. We're, we're done on this video. Um, just one last comment here. 
he bar attacks all the stress points, right? If it wasn't a quality piece of gear, you can bet your ass we wouldn't own it. Okay? All right, guys, this is Doug uh, from Yellow Hawk Customs Outdoors and Bob. The Grizz. We'll see you on the next one. Roger that. Thank you. Out.